All right. Well, we're back for another week of Can We Answer Your Questions? TC, do you want to answer everyone's questions? I mean, we're going to try, but, you know, we get in the weeds so fast that who, who we're knows if we're actually, weeds. yeah, who knows if we're actually going to get to them all, but yeah. we'll try. So the big question everyone's going to ask, how did you do it slash and burn? Not great, but it was really fun. So I went, I dropped third and then I dropped like 793rd or something like that, where I went in a snake order. So I was flat light as shit. And then when I went to take my second lap on the way up, it started raining a little bit. And then it was flat light again. So I was like, all right, well, didn't do as well as I wanted. But, I mean, it was so much fun. Like, the course was great this year. Charlie at Steamboat, who made it, uh, used the snowcat to push it. So instead of having it, like, being hand-shaped and everything, where it gets super ruddy and just chewed out by, like, 10 people that ride, it stayed, like, perfect all day. It was a sick course. Like, those guys in Steamboat crushed it. That's legit. Yeah. I, ended I up bought Hell Divers stuff. too and brought democracy to the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> I have been living my inner Starship Troopers in that game. Since you've <laughs> talked about it, I get at or like I get like stuff on Instagram for it for like people playing that game and stuff, and I just laugh at it. I have no idea what it's about, but I'm like, okay, that actually seems pretty funny. It's about <laughs> democracy with guns. <laughs> Forced managed democracy for Super Earth. Like okay. last night, I was playing, and the I got paired with two level twos that did not know their ass from a hole in the ground. They got me killed, and then they looted my shit. They took my good gun, <laughs> and I was pissed because I couldn't call in another stratagem to get one for like two minutes. I fucking murdered them, <laughs> and they were pissed. So I murder them. Then I killed everything else on the level by myself. Called them back in for reinforcements, let them load the evac ship, killed them on the evac ship, and got on and took off. And I was like, don't ever fucking steal my shit. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So there, 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 there was that. It was uh yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, uh I've been playing that at night and also just making tons of content, so much content. Yeah. I have to meet with the editor tomorrow to go over all the content. <laughs> I did the math and roughly I figured we're going to have something like 650 videos by the end of the summer. At that point, it's not even content. It's just programming. <laughs> yeah. It's just going to be a fully functioning TV channel on YouTube where it's something new all the time. <laughs> I, starting September 1st, 10 a.m. first review. And then um, 8 p.m. I think we'll do the second review of the day. Or maybe, like, I got to figure out, I might do 8 and 8, like a 12-hour block in between. Yeah. And then, like, on Wednesdays, you're going to get the review, the top five, then another review. Mondays and Fridays, you're going to get an explained video and two reviews. Thursdays, live stream and two reviews. And I was like, Jesus Christ. It was... Yeah, it's uh, just looking at stuff. I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, just for a frame of reference for anyone that's going to wonder, if you're a member of Angry Snowboard or VIP, starting on Monday, one review a day, and I'm scheduling stuff out now through the middle of July, almost to the end, and we still have roughly, my guess is like another 80-something pieces to ride. Yeah. So like, we've already done... Last count, I'd have to I have to recount, but I think last count we were at a hundred and nine done. And I know there's more than that. So yeah. yeah. Next year is gonna be insane. Yeah. Like, anyone in the review <laughs> space that says they're more prolific than us, no. Anyone that says they know more than us, no. Nobody touches <laughs> like how much we do. So, all right, let's, uh, okay, let's start with the first question of the day from Your Guitar One. My only board right now is a LibTech Rassman. I found a Captain Mercury on sale for 377 bucks. Is that too good a deal to pass up for a second board or is it too much of the same and I should save my money for next year? 
No, do it. Go pick it up because they have different camber profiles. They do ride entirely different. The Mercury's got more camber. I was actually riding the new Mercury for next yeah. year. So pick it up at 377. That's a great deal. That's a great yeah. deal. Okay, we got our boy letters. Spin for Slim, hashtag Gibson Jibsaw, worst board. <laughs> Anything from Gilson's the worst board. Can you believe they called one the Jibsaw? Like, there's already a Jibsaw out there. Come on. <laughs> Coming soon. So close. To a wheel near you. All right. We got... Eric and Millie, a uh, 40 year old intermediate East Coast rider on my fifth season. Daily driver is a ride shadow band, but considering adding a Solomon dance hall for spring slush. Too much overlap? No, go do it. No, go do it. Go do it. And there's some crazy deals out there right now. Like, mm -hmm. so many crazy deals. Shout out to my boy Charlie at Holy Stokes in East Stroud, uh, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. The store is on sale right now. Uh, there are some crazy discounts. If you go in there, go in and talk to him. He might even play Let's Make a Deal with you. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, dude, East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Go to Holy Stokes. Uh, great I, uh, snowboard shop. Great snowboard shop. Yeah, sport local. But I uh, I lost my mittens at Slash and Burn, a.k.a. I'm pretty sure my friends just took them and threw them away because they knew <laughs> how nasty and old they were. But uh, so I had to buy a new pair at P-Tools. And dude, fifty percent off, like such a good deal. And it's like, okay, so they also have the deals. Christie Sports got shit blown out right now too, like, and there's still good sizes left and stuff. That's the thing that blew my mind. So like every Saturday, if you subscribed on YouTube, you'll get a notification from us on the community tab. I've been putting up sale stuff. Tactics has a ton of capita and union that they're blowing out right mm -hmm. now, and they have the bigger sizes. It's crazy. Um, just like looking through, finding like killer board deals and stuff. I mean, they're selling stuff up to 40 or 50 percent. Christie's has stuff at 50 percent, Evo's got stuff at 40 percent, Blower's got stuff at 40 percent. Like, and Blower's got next year's too. If, you, yeah. if you're looking to go that route too, like, yeah. they got the goods. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. All right. We got our boy Ruff. Weekly donation to the Democratic Savior of the Bug, Robot, and Snowboard World. Saving you from Kooks and Denise Richards. Hashtag Averin's Rangooners. What's up with Denise Richards? She was in Starship Troopers. Oh, okay. I, I are, you are you subscribed to her OnlyFans? No. No, but she, uh, she has a place in Steamboat. Paid for by OnlyFans. Uh, probably now, yeah. Shit's not cheap. Did she have that when she was married to Charlie? I don't know. I'm assuming that was when I still lived there. That was like my first year there. She like had a place there. So I'm assuming she bought it before that. But I don't know. You know who used to have a condo here? OJ Simpson. <laughs> Well, you know, and he used to go to the town <laughs> golf tournaments. Love that. <laughs> the juice was loose. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got the isotoners for uh, gripping that club, so he can give out some advice. Or holding on to a knife. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. If I did. Yeah. Maybe that'll oh, so be the next just angry book in, club. We do now. have a poll in the chat today. And it is, what kind of haircut should TC get? We have flowing locks, cornrows, skullet, or mohawk. Skullet is winning right now. I could see that. Yeah. Let's give you a spin here. Oh, yeah. Click them links. Click them links. All right. We got Andrew Mahoney here, 15th season, five foot nine, 180 pounds, Ice Coast Park rat turned steep slut. I love my Retox 147 and my Worldwide Weapon 53, but they flap at 50 plus miles per hour. 80 miles per hour on my brother's 162 Gypsy HD has me looking for directional setback border cross boards. No, no, no. no. You want it? You don't want border cross. You don't. You don't. You need to buy a board specifically for it. It is time for you to get a directional tapered board. Yep. Yeah. You 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 got your park boards. It's fine. You're good. 
now it's time to get that board for the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, if you do like like a raw signal feel, get like a like an XD would be totally fine. You'll still grip all that steep and deep or that steep shit. Um, otherwise, like an Alchemist or even like a Megadeth, and you'll be totally fine ripping eighty miles an hour on that thing. Like flagship, ultra flagship. Yep. Something like that. Something directional, like you said. Something directional. And Arbor, you're gonna be Brian, fine. Gucci, Camber. Yep. You know? But not a border cross board. That is going to be no. too one dimensional where like if you wanted to go hit a side hit or something, it's going to be just the worst. It's also going to be harder to turn over. Like it's not going to be nimble. Those things are made to like hold an edge pretty much and like ride banked turns. So border cross boards, not the way to go. Also expensive as shit. Way overpriced for what you need like you'd end up with some shitty ass donic too that has a yep. horrible tune job on the bottom yep and then they're gonna make you pay double because they're like well it's custom made to you even though they probably have like the fucking mold sitting there that they just tell everybody it's custom and it's the same oh, damn yeah. thing for everybody right you don't need it would be another good one too yeah if you really wanted something that's gonna ride even more like a border cross board get it in the wide because that's what like cody winters who races for the u.s olympic team when he goes and does bank slaloms he rides like a i think it's a 64 wide uh alchemist because it feels the most like a border cross board where it's he's not going to boot out or anything and he's got plenty of surface area to keep flat so if that's really what you're looking for go wide my blood sugar is low to. and i'm eating m m's and drinking soda i <laughs> got a mexican soda though that shit's good <laughs> damn right Arritos. Arritos. I don't fuck around with that <laughs> high fructose corn syrup bullshit. It's not coming in a glass bottle. I don't want it. Yeah, because I can smash this and use it to stab someone in the neck <laughs> in the parking lot, which almost happened today. Yeah. He had like, a nice Jeep, and I was bummed about that. I was like, damn, dude, that is a sick Jeep. Here's what, I this is what one. I don't understand, right? You don't have a parking pass. Your kid works for the mountain and gave you got you into pay, the paid parking lot for free. He's giving you a free lift ticket. You're a guest of his. He works for the mountain. He's working today. And you're going to start fights. It wasn't just me. He tried it with multiple people. And I pull in because it's a parking spot. And I just take it. And he's like, you're a fucking asshole. You can't park there. And I was like, I can park anywhere I want. I paid for this. You didn't. And when I called him out and I said, you obviously have never parked here because I'm here every day. And I've never seen this piece of shit. He got really pissed about that because it was it's a shitty Jeep. It had a shitty It is a shitty thing. Jeep, but that shitty Jeep's gonna run forever as long as you put oil in it every once in a while. Once in a while, but his lift kit, <laughs> his lift kit was fucking hockey pucks. Oh, I wouldn't have put a lift kit on that thing. I would have just kept her stock. And his tires were so fucking wide they can't grip in snow. But yeah, so he starts picking a fight with me. He's like, You parked like an asshole. And I was like, Why? Because I pulled all the way in. So that way, if you go to back out and turn, you wouldn't clip any car. I gave you an extra four feet of space. Yeah, I parked on a sidewalk, a non-functioning sidewalk that I've been parking on all year. Like, but yeah, he started, you know, he was starting to fight with people. And I was like, if you want to make this into something, I will finish it. And when I stepped to him, I think he, when he looked up at me and was like, oh my God, this guy's a foot and a half taller than me and probably <laughs> 60 pounds heavier. And he is going to throttle me. And I like called him out on it. And I was like, you're what? And when I called him out, this is the best part. When I was like, you don't even have a parking pass. I'm going to go buy one right now. You're going to go drop $800 right now on a parking pass that they stopped selling. I don't know. Last March. Yeah. Eat a dick, dude. I I, two days after it went on sale, it was done. 12 hours sold out in 12 hours. There you go. But yeah, he was just, he was being a fucking asshole. I feel bad for his kid. The fucked up thing was he was my age. And when I talked to his kid who showed up, the kid was closer in age to you. And I'm like, Does this guy have a kid when he was like 15? Like, yeah. So, I don't know. Anyways, we're getting off in the weeds here. <laughs> All right. We got a super chat from BZMs. What rider do you want to see go the big mountain route? I'd say Dusty Hendrickson personally. Hashtag Gorb didn't save room for pie. Hashtag spin for slim. Hashtag 203 commissioner went. Hashtag Gorb supports the bugs. Hashtag donate to Shred Foundation. Yep. I blew Gorb up the other night when I was playing. 
he came walking up with a bomb and I was like, don't you bring that near me. Yeah. And we all like, we were all playing and ran back. I blew him up. It was funny. We all <laughs> it was for democracy, but yeah. Could you imagine a 203 ride commissioner though? Jesus. I think you go to flex it like in a turn and it just wouldn't, it would just go on edge and just stay on edge. Like you'd just be going straight like this. Yeah. It's just straight, but you're like standing on edge. You're like, Oh, this is weird. Yeah. God. Yeah. Or you'd have to be fucking like an NBA player, just huge. Right. But who would you want to see? The big mountain route, huh? Oh, man. Oh, that's a... I think Zeb. I'd Zeb. really like to see what Zeb would do if he went to natural selection. Okay. Him or LJ. I think that Henrique's, I think those two okay. would be really interesting to see in there. Um, I just think LJ's got so much promise because he's like 15. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's a real interesting one when you see people like that. Like Zeb, see, the thing with Zeb is, you know, he'd be riding a 203. He would. So he's got no, 208. 208. Yeah. Sorry. Burton had to one up nitro with a custom. Yeah. yeah. But, but um, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I was thinking like Brandon Davis, like his backcountry clips recently have been so good. Like he's only been riding in the backcountry for two years now or something. And he's got like nines and sevens down. And it's like, okay, dude, like you really can snowboard like it's not just like a rail thing for him anymore it's oh. like you fucking got this shit him or like i know we have years for it but like reed smith as well like but we have years until like i feel like once you get into your 30s then it's like okay i'm gonna stop hucking meat off of like rails and jumps and shit it's like 27 the country more. 27 is magic is when they start when they really start to go into the backcountry more and by 30 they've become a seasoned pro <laughs> Yeah. So otherwise Jill Perkins too. I've seen I've been seeing some of her clips of her getting in the backcountry a little bit or in the side country, I think. But like you know, I can I'd easily like see... see Justin Phipps just because I've known him since he was like nine years old. And okay. he's doing all these he's like he's filming with video grass this year and he's doing all this urban stuff, but I know that kid can smash pow and he's yeah, like what people don't realize is he's not a jib kid, he grew up as a jump kid. We used to, in the spring at Breck, we used to drop in front of him because he was so little he couldn't get speed. <laughs> so he'd be on our tail. We'd be packing it down so he could go hit the lip. <laughs> so, so like, I used to go into, like, freeway with him, and I'd go mobbing in in front of him, and he'd drop, like, three seconds behind me. And then I'd side slip the lip and go over the backside, and he'd go hit, like, the 50-plus foot jumps. <laughs> and shit because he had no weight because i think i asked him one time i was like do you even weigh 100 pounds he's like i'm 89 and I was like, oh my god <laughs> yeah that's funny but yes yeah, some somebody like that actually you know what would be interesting to see is sean white in the back country like i want to see him do big mountain shit but you know, uh, you know back in the day before he went full of contest jock he actually put out when he was like 12 he put out a little back country part with one of the uh is either sta I think it was standard films that he did it with, but it might have been Mac Dog, but I'm pretty sure it was standard. And he actually went and hit some like backcountry jumps and stuff when he was a kid. And then he went full yeah. contest jock like two years later. Yeah. Well, he, because yeah, in his documentary thing, they did have <laughs> clips of him riding pow and shit like that. And it was like, oh, this okay. Stance like this wide. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, he was a kid. So he was still on a tiny board where it looked like his stance was just straight up. Like, uh, but I don't know. I've been seeing him ride more and more power recently, and it actually looks like he's having fun snowboarding. So I feel like he's hit a point in his life where he's like, so this is what I've been missing the last 20 yeah. years. And it's it like, actually, yeah, dude, this is what we've all been pissed off at you about. Yeah, and it kind of makes me happy, actually. It seemed like he, he likes it, because I know a lot of people do get burnt out on it. Like, Ladley's another guy that's like, he bought a sled just to ride the sled so he didn't have to ride his snowboard in the winter. And it's like, now he's back on his board. He's like, this shit's fun, dude. I'm like, yeah, it's really fun when you don't have to do stuff you don't want to do. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't have uh, to go 20 feet out of the pipe if you don't want to, man. Like, 
No. It's, it's crazy. All right, let's give this man a spin. That's right. I friggin' rigged this. It's all me. All right. We got Or Ian who wants to keep snowboard culture alive. Hashtag spray skiers always. Oh, dude, almost smoked some skiers going through the border cross course today. They were just standing in the first turn right in the armpit of it. And oh, my I, God, those people <laughs> sucked. Just came around so hot and was like, uh-oh. Oh, it's a vibe, man. Remember? It's a vibe. Yeah, that's what they told me. Like, it's a vibe, dude. And then I waited for him at the jump. Like, yo, not a vibe. And like, you are standing in the middle of a feature. Like, someone's going to come through and kill you. Especially because they have border cross this week. Yes. All right. We got Ted G. Do I need a wide Jones mountain twin? I wear a size 10 ride lasso boot. The Jones website says the 154 centimeter fits boot size is seven to nine things. I've ridden the 54 with a 10 Thraxis. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Unless you got like some weird ass narrow stance. That's like 18 I centimeters. I still think you'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> It's just two, you it's two bolts pushed all the way in. <laughs> just the reverse T-bolt, just right in the middle. Yeah. But yeah, you'll be fine. I don't even know why they put boot sizes on there. Because, like, who's 9 to 7 is that? 32s? Because that's what Jeremy uh, rides? Yeah. Well, so the thing is, I, I've been bitching about this. Nidecker's doing it, and a bunch of brands are. With at the inserts. It makes sense. Waste I think Razzie's doing it. Well, this is the whole thing. Like the the waist width thing is a throwback to skiing because that's the waist was where you would mount your bindings for your skis. Yeah. For us, because we're further out, it makes more sense to know that than the waist width of the snowboard. I'm not saying it's I, I don't pay attention to the waist width. I look more at the nose tail width and go, oh yeah, that's gonna work. Because with a size yeah. 10, I can go, you know, we can go either way with wide or regular. Which, you know, if you're Chad Lewis from Battalion, you just give TC all the wide boards for park. Yeah. Ah, here's a 169 wide. Well, okay, thanks. Yeah, it's pretty easy to slide sideways, but because uh, I can't get out to the contact point. But yeah. Thanks, Chad. No. Yeah. Well, that's because Chad gets to ride them all then. Yes. Yes. We got Joe Gunn. Is the Battalion Adam kind of like an Astro with a fancy high back, a Battalion Black label? It's. So it's essentially the exact same chassis and foot pad, toe strap, heel strap is the Astro. The high back is the big difference in there. It is a stiffer high back. It's stiffer than a black label. If anything, the Atom is closer to a cleaver. Yeah. But it's an ASIM wrapped cleaver. That's really what it is. Like they did the one year they made an Atom full wrap and they haven't brought it back and they should. Like if anything, they should get rid of the Atom asim and go to the adam full wrap it makes sense for that body it would make more sense yes so yeah. if but, anyone uh, in battalion's listening to us yeah. swap them yeah and uh that high back is stiff even stiff. though there's really nothing to it that thing is stiff yeah nice. that cut out it's like all the flex is just because there's nothing in the middle and even that is not a lot because it's very rigid like when you go to torsionally twist it you're like eh. It, yeah. I'm pretty sure that high back's actually stiffer than the cleavers. Yep, I could see that. Yeah, 100 percent because I did just ride the cleaver last week. And you can still tweak easier on that than you can on the atom, even though it's a full wrap. Like yeah. so, that'll tell you. Yeah. All right. Take this one. The super chat from Dlock79. Does TC ever get angry? Hashtag most gears not bush. Hashtag beer board. Not really. Uh, I've seen you get certain, angry, but not much. You don't, a, you're not like me. No. Takes it's a zero to a hundred every time. Yeah. You're just like, I'm going to walk away because Avery's about to go kill someone. <laughs> yeah, no. Not really. It's a special kind of stupid to be like, really? And even then, I'm not like yelling or anything like that. No, more it's displeased. more like, the, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Oh, dude, I had that today. There was... When I was like, when I told you it took me 30 minutes to get on Eagle and then up Eagle, it was like 30 minutes pretty much the whole time. 
And then I look left, like after I've been waiting in line, because there's no singles line on the, the gondola side. And there's just like four dudes that walk up. And I'm like, what are you guys doing with your skis in the walking line? And they're like, oh, we're going to go eat lunch at the top. And I was like, yeah, I just you got to get in this line. And they're like, no, 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 we're with these guys. It's cool. And like the guy, like he's like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, we're going to get lunch and then ski. And he's like, okay, just for next time, you cannot do this. And they're like, it's cool. We're getting lunch. And I was like, hey, if I get an espresso, can I just go up there then? And the guy looked at me. He's like, you know better, dude. And I was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, And I had people around me be like, wait. If we could do that, I'll go buy French fries up there just to skip the line. And I'm like, yeah, yeah see? <laughs> see what you started? See? Yeah. You're the assholes. Yeah. Oh. Try again. All right. We got Rich Foster. I've never ridden in April, but I'm thinking about it. Is the snow still good? The snow is frigging great right now. It's going to be good all through April. It's my favorite time almost besides like pow season, like spring slushy snow in April is the shit. Like bring a long fast. sleeve shirt. Yeah. Bring a long sleeve for, for some reason. Yeah. Up in summit here. Like the snow never really gets like that sticky slow where you're like, I'm it, does. it, it gets soft, but yeah, I guess that last week, maybe like, or like at a basin. It does. But, like, but it, it, so here's the thing. When it gets that, it's usually like the last week they're open. If you go up early in the morning and ride till noon and just leave at noon, you get the best. Like people are like, yeah. I can't believe you're up. Cause I, you know, when I go up to the base and the test stuff, people will be like, man, you're here every day this early and you're always ripping corduroy. And I was like, I got to rip it before it goes to shit. Yeah. And I'm like, cause the second it goes to shit, I'm like, I'm out of here. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. I'm not dealing with this shit, but Yeah. The snows, I mean, this week we probably got almost two feet. Yeah. And we're supposed to get like eight inches tonight and then like another five sat Saturday and Sunday. And then like some, we're, we're just supposed to get snow until next Wednesday now. Yeah. I saw Sunday, Monday were going to be the big days over yeah. like the weekend ish. And I was like, are you fucking kidding? I was like, I'm never going to get these park roam boards done that I've had in the room for like a month because of this. I think every time, okay, like, so it's here's be a the park snow week. report for copper Tuesday. So, two inches overnight, starting at midnight for Friday, one inch Saturday, one inch Sunday, three inches Monday, one inch Tuesday, and then another inch on the following Saturday. But I'm gonna bet just knowing how the snow totals are and how warm it's been, we're probably gonna get double that amount. That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, today I went into lower enchanted. And found a lot. I don't know how anyone did not pick this line. It was literally right by the entrance point. Knee deep. There's nothing. <laughs> Knee deep for like 600 feet of vertical. Just hmm. throwing pop. Like you and I, when we did that one hot lap and we went to hit the traverse, like yeah. under the accelerator trees, I came in hot and went to slash and I figured it was just going to be sun baked pow because it sits in the sun. It was knee deep. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that threw me back. So yeah, there's. Snow's good right now. Yeah. And good coverage. Steamboat's got dirt patches. We don't. Like I saw one spot in a high traffic area that was about this big around that it was a little brown underneath. And I was like, literally, when the cat pushes that snow tonight, we'll cover it. Yeah. All right. We got Timothy C. Hi, guys. I saw a 2024 Bedellian Disaster 151 for 250 bucks. I'm 5'7", 135 pounds. Do you think the 151 is too long? Thanks in advance. No, you're fine as long as you don't have a crazy big boot. I've yep. ridden a 51 with a size 10, and that is pushing it. That's yeah. pushing it. Otherwise, that's like a perfect size for you, I'd say. Yeah. Because you're light. Yep. Let's see. All right. I got this one from Fizzled. I'm a 27 Mondo point, but every boot I try on in a size nine kills my foot. If I size up to a 9.5 or a 10, then it seems fine, but my toes don't touch the front of the liner. Thoughts? It's too big if your toes aren't touching the front of the liner. Yeah, when you try on that size nine, lace it up all the way and put like flex into it where you take your knee and put it in line with your toes. That yeah, should pull your it. toes. Yeah, flex into it where because really, that'll be your snowboard stance like if i so, put yeah. on my boots yeah go tighten it up and basically put your knee so it flexes so this creases and your knee is over the toe 
That's going to pull you deeper into the heel pocket. That's how it's going to be when you're actually riding, because hopefully you're not riding all super stiff leg and straight stony baloney. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because otherwise, yeah, that's that's how it's going to fit, and then like it's only going to get bigger from there on out. So like, or when you get it, heat mold it, and that'll push it right out for you. Put a toe, put a little foam toe cap on it. Boom, done. Go into a shop, pay him twenty bucks to heat mold it for you. If you didn't buy it from him, if you bought it from him, it should be free. But yeah. Just got an email from Joe Sexton. <laughs> Casual name drop. <laughs> yeah, just say NBD, not a not a big deal, you know. Six flex, all that jazz. <laughs> uh, all right. So from Stay Anonymous, female equivalent to the Rome stale fish. There isn't one from Rome. The closest would be the women's Rome ravine. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like this one from Insularity. Did you see the video out of Sunday River of that douche canoe trying to save a parking spot on a powder day? No other question. That guy can go suck an egg through a garden hose. I'm pretty sure that guy's sucking semen blindfolded in the back alley behind a Denny's. Was that the dude laying on his back in the parking spot? Hey, I haven't seen that one. So. I don't know. I, I saw one that was like, look at this asshole. And I didn't actually click the video. I was like, eh. There's some fat guy shirtless just laying on the ground. And I was like, looks like he got too drunk at the bar. I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the one or not. But no, did not see it. Just park on top of him. He All got right. the clearance. That makes it funny. We got Daffy drunk. Doing a trip to A Basin before summer. When do the beavers usually close for the season? I keep missing it and want to check it out. Cheers. I want to say that they close like the end of April, if not the start of May. I don't know about that. We I'm are trying there yesterday. I'm trying to remember when they closed last year. It was late. Yeah. And like I was uh, in there yesterday and the snow was good. So they're at least going to be open at least another two weeks. Well, I shouldn't say it was coverage good. Was good. The coverage was good. Coverage was good. Riding yeah. it was not good. I fucking beat my body up. It, I hammered myself. Yeah. That yeah. was a whole, that was my first lap yesterday. Oh, no. Came off the pally chair and dipped right down into the beeves. Montezuma Bowl, and that was not good either. Montezuma Bowl was way better than going into the Beavs first run. Also, did, yeah. you, hit, did you hit the step up with the slow sign in the Montezuma Bowl? The one with the rocks? If you didn't make it far enough, you're going to land on the rocks? No. Oh, so, like, okay. if you come down, like, the chairlift is here, you come down and you hook a left, and then there's that rock outcropping, and you go around, and it goes down, and then it comes back up like this, and there's a slow sign. No. If you hit that at full speed, you could send it out like 40 feet yesterday and you'd be about 10 feet in the air. I oh, wow. fucking launched that thing. And some dude was just sitting there like, <laughs> he like looks at me and he's just like, <laughs> and I was like, I just blew this guy's mind. So, yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah, I think the Beavers closes like late April. Yeah. It, it is usually so. one of the first to close, though. Yeah, it's full of rocks. Like, yeah. But, yeah. but because of the way it sits, it doesn't get as much sun. So. It's true. All right. Where are we going? Well, this isn't blank. <laughs> All right, we got Luke Shinowski, spin for democracy, hashtag interstellar Slim Whitman. Dude, I have not had so much fun playing a game, but I got yelled at by a group of guys because I was role playing a little too hard. <laughs> They're like, I don't know where the net, the computer voice of your character screaming about democracy ends and you begin. <laughs> I've, I've been. Uh. All right. And letters spin for, wait, where am I? <laughs> hell. You're in hell, letters. Remember to ollie those slow signs. And then we got our boy Martin Hunt with the super chat. Just wanted to say thanks for the help yesterday. He bought uh, our personal shopper service. 
Ended up taking a shot on the Jones Tweaker Pro, the traditional camber and chloride in the tip and tail sealed the deal in the end. Hope it's not quite as stiff as the aviator. It shouldn't be. Should be like aviator should be here and it should be somewhere down here, I think. So Yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't have the extra stiffeners like the aviator does. It's just full camber. So yeah. aviator's got a little rocker in it. This one's got camber, but it's also got more core milling in between the feet. So foot steering, it's not gonna be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. I don't know. We'll ride that next week. Maybe oh god, do we get the John stuff next week? After the demo. Oh, so, yeah, I don't know. I guess whenever we, I don't ever ask PD for it. We have so much shit still left to ride. I know. I th I'm like, dang, like we're getting, we're getting down there. I only got like 20 boards in my room that I haven't ridden yet. Now, 18. I came back like, to two Karua board boxes today. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I haven't even opened them. I just threw them in my bedroom because I have, I'm literally running out of room to put board boxes in the spare bathroom. <laughs> So like, just so everyone knows, I have a full size shower that's nothing but board boxes. Then yeah, in front true. of the shower to the toilet is more board boxes. Then the toilet is covered with the binding boxes with boxes inside the boxes. <laughs> then the, then it goes from the wall to the other wall with more board boxes. And then behind the door is even more board boxes. And then on top of the sink is more binding boxes with more boxes in them. And it's gotten to the point where I just open the door and I throw a board box like up and onto stuff and pray that I'll be able to open the door later. <laughs> it's a fire hazard in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I had a roommate, they'd kill me. <laughs> yeah. So All right. let's give Martin a spin here. Just so you know, the pole now is leading with cornrows. I've done that before. You have to try again, Martin. One All of my right. friends is really good at it. So we would just like day drink and be like, can you put my hair in cornrows? Like, uh -huh, yeah, sure. And it would be like a once a week thing. <laughs> I had cornrows back in high school. And I also had braids with beads in it for some reason. I don't even know where that one came from. My little brother had them. I had them. We just sort of had braided hair. It was weird. <sighs> Yeah. And then he decided to take his out and straighten it. And he looked like Cat Williams. <laughs> He's like, it's a pimp named Slickback. <laughs> and I was like, Mr. Slickback. No, it's a pimp named Slickback. They don't call it Tribe Quest. It's a tribe called Quest. <laughs> Super weird. So, all right. Tomato Joe, always say no to Butter Dojo. Discount Margarine Studio? <laughs> You rigged this question. Why do you got to be rigging stuff? It's easier than, than sending envelopes. There you go. All right. We got C Cesar J. Quintero. Uh, angry. I just bought the Black Snowboard to Death 24 with the Atlas bindings. Want new boots? More for the stiffer side. Any recommendations? Also, what do you think about this 24 version of the Black Snowboard Death? Didn't change from the 23. So it's still the same. same thing. Yeah. So it's solid. Gonna give you the best advice I can. Best boots, the one that fits your foot and fits your needs. You gotta try on everything you can. So yep. Yep. But yeah, I mean, when you do go to the store, ask them for like an Insano, a Thraxis, uh something like that. But yeah, you're definitely gonna want something stiffer, yeah. but make sure you just try them on. Like try everything. Because like like I mean, like we always say, like Averin's version of stiff is not gonna be the same version of stiff for me. Yeah. Like just I mean, not. I ride a Thraxis and I don't think it's stiff enough. <laughs> yeah, see? And like the K2 guys are always like, you're insane. And I was like, no, you can make it stiffer. I know you can. And they're like, why? And I was like, I want more response. Yeah. I mean, like, even the old... Soft now. Yeah. I mean, my, my rides are getting there for sure. But, I think uh... I got a brand new pair of next year's sitting in my bedroom. I know. I really want to take those for Slash and Burn. Just to brag. I would have been like, just let me put my old liners in it. I just need the shell. Like, I need some more stiffness because 
I tied those boots as tight as they possibly could go. And those laces, I gave them everything they had because the next day when I went to tighten them, it just snapped. TC did not have a good Tuesday. Oh my God, was that the toughest, just most like just annoying day that was just funny like by the end of the day when i was like telling like my friends and family about it I was like you know what i'm not even mad like this is just comically f- bad how like everything just went wrong in that one day like, well i just love like when we're leaving I, I was like well have a better day and you're like it can't get any worse and i just stop and i was like don't say that it's yeah. going to get worse i know it can get worse you still have to drive i-70 and then you cracked your windshield yep and then my windshield cracked even more so that was cool. There was a new crack in that. My laces broke. I forgot my tape measure and my screwdriver. So I had to go into the shop and get that. And it was Dropped not the right board. Pod. Dropped a jewel pod off the lift. So that really sucked. Like literally just took it out of my pocket and it just popped, bounced off my lap, off the chair and just went down. I was like, mm, that's it. And you're like, you want to go get it? I was like, fuck no, I don't. That thing's done. We're over this. This whole day is shot. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a fun day, you know. <laughs> like getting there and having three things bad happen the second I pulled in, I was like, I just can't, you know. Had to park in the further away lot. Like Yeah. Yep. But hey, ever since then nothing it hasn't been as bad. Knock on wood on that, but you know. Yep. All right. No, we got this super chat from Linus Staff. Thanks for the reviews on the Aviator 2.0 and the Astro ASIMs. Love both the board and the bindings. It's a solid setup. Yeah. That's a solid setup. Oh, somebody's got to try again. All right. We got this hypothetical question from CJ. It's a sunny day and you're about to drop into a Utah bank slum. Gee, would that be the bomb hole cup? You grabbing your super DOA with union stratas or your mercury with the now select pros. I'm grabbing the super DOA and throwing the mercuries on it or uh, throwing the select pros. That's what Mm -hmm. I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I want, I want power and response and I want to be able to pop if I have to. And that faster structure. Yes. Yes. Not saying the Mercury structure is not good, but the one on the Super DOA is much better. I want that and boost. I want that boost to the Super DOA. If you had a Mega Mercury, I'd be all about it. Yeah. I mean, the pen, yeah. If it's tighter turns, I probably want the Super DOA. If it's going to be more drawn out, maybe the Mercury. But definitely select pros, because you want that power to just drive it, like, heel to toe. Yep. And you want that like stiffer base where you're not going like laterally as much. Like if you get, especially on bank songs, if you get bucked around a little bit and sent in the back seat, you want a little bit more. That's why I was like super DOA might have too soft of a nose and tail on it, but like just stay centered. Like well, yeah. thing, you can push off the center of the board if you have to in yeah. there and it'll be a little bit better. Like honestly, both like, I mean, I rode the Mercury today chasing TC on the Megadeth. Yeah. Literally chasing TC on the Megadeth. I would say bring both boards, bring that one pair of bindings and just see what you feel more comfortable with. Like when you're when you're riding right before you go and then just use whichever board you're more comfortable with. But Bradley is super DOA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We got Lam Wong with uh, what's a good board for people with small feet that like to carve hard? Anything. You've got small feet. You'll never have to worry about booting out. Berserker. Any carving board. Any, yeah, carving, any board. carving board. Any carving I would board. say, depending on how small your feet are, like if you got like a really small foot, you want something with a really narrow waist foot, like a berserker would be the way to go. Yes. Because like if my size 10 on a 56 is close, it's kind of sus. Yeah. Or like when I rode the 59, I was like, yeah, this thing is perfect. That's what I want. But that would be the one where it's like narrow waist width. Yeah. I'm trying to think mm-hmm. what else has one. Oh, man. There's so many boards out there. You could go rip a carve with. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Like, like, Anything- like if you, you, you don't have to worry about booting out. It doesn't matter. Like you're good. As long as 
As long as you're not like a size four or five, because then suddenly shit's just going to be so wide, you're going to struggle to leverage it. But you're good at almost everything. Yeah, I would say not volume shifted boards. Stay to something true to size, because it's just going to be a little bit harder for you to get edge to edge with a small foot on a volume shift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we got this super chat from letters. Spin for slushy, hashtag Lstacker lives. It's true, they posted a photo. He does exist. He did not die. The legend of uh, Bogus Basin lives on. All right, join Angry Snowboarder VIP. All right, we got this question from IK. Is there a noticeable difference between the high backs of the Astro Asim and Full Wrap? Looks like one has some holds and one doesn't. No, it's the same high back. Yeah, you're probably looking at two different years if yeah. one doesn't have holes and one does, but it should be the exact same high back. Yeah. Everything should be the same except for the full wrap. All right, we got Judah Nolan. Icon or Epic for Colorado? Depends what resorts you want to go to, man. You can go either way. Depends how far you want to drive, too. If you want to stay centrally located, ask, go Epic, because then you can hit five resorts in the same county if you want to kind of venture out a little bit go like on them but yeah but well, they're not in the same county well close enough i mean it's just a pass that separates them yeah all right All right, Centauri 2410. Hey, guys, just picked up a Jones flagship and a 158. Reference stance is huge for me. If I use the front pack holds to make a narrow stance, will it affect performance? No, dude, it's personal preference. Just, just You don't have to mount a board on reference stance, and the Jones reference stances are fucking astronomically huge. huge. The 58 is almost a 24-inch reference stance. It's like 23.7. 23.8. 23.8, even 23.8. That's what my that's what my stratos is, and I'm like, I mounted it up once on reference to see, never again, yeah. never. And if anything, if you're concerned about it, keep the back foot on the reference and slide the front foot in, and that that should give you the same amount of edge hold. Like Travis, our rep, his back foot is on reference. His foot front foot is all the way on the pow stance to get his like how narrow he needs it. So, like, he's not even on the front actual inserts. Uh, I mean, when I ride, like, the 58 or the 61, if I'm on the 58, I bring I bring it in one on reference. Or no. Two on the front, one on the back. So I've got more nose than tail. And if I'm on the 61, I think I have to bring it in, like, two on two and two. Yeah. On there or something like that. So, yeah. All right. We got our boy Andrew Holton cracked a damn rib, still volunteering at USASA Ooh. this Saturday at Copper. Anyone out riding should come say what up and bring me painkillers. <laughs> bring that man a warm coffee since he's got to stand around and watch the kids too. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, say what's up to my buddy Curtis when he's there. He's a big yeah. tall gorilla looking guy. He'll be tall there. gorilla guy that's going to be uh, announcing the half pipe. Okay, got this super chat from Luke Shinowski. Have you tried the new Rosnell Slashimi? Any thoughts? I have. They shouldn't have got rid of the Sashimi. They should have kept it. So you had Sashimi and Slashimi because they're really designed for two different people. Slashimi, it the car it needs a little more carbon in the tail just to give it a little more spring, in my opinion. It's just a little too soft. I love the shape. It's a fun ride. It's very sick Solomon Six Stick esque or something in that vein. But killing off the sashimi did not make sense. So, yeah. Hmm. All right. Oh. Oh, click the links. All right. We got our boy, my knees are cheese. Looking good, boys. I know... It's true that an angry sticker makes your board faster, but is a black base actually faster than others? Or is that an urban myth? Also, any crusty butt tips? Checking it out next week. Never been. I've never been to Crested Butte. I've never been either. I heard it's uh, awesome. I do know you're not allowed to ride the T-bar solo. Yep. And you're going to you. be, if you want to get to the good terrain, you're going to be hiking. That's like what all the locals do there. I've heard is like 
you take the lift up and then you're just pretty much out there the rest of the day hiking for all the good shit and then back down to the left pretty much and then it is Um, true black bases if they are not die cut in any way are faster mm -hmm. it's just it's just something about it that works because i think it's something to do with the extrusion process and whatnot in there like colors and it is that like basically if you get a board that's just one color and a good structure it'll be faster no die yeah. cuts nothing in there so yeah. well it's uh i thought it was because all the black was like carbon infused that's how they get it black and then like all the good wax is carbon infused as well so it just adds a little extra that's what i've been told i don't know if that's true or not but yeah if you look at any of the world cup race boards or anything it's all one color with no graphic on the bottom so they say black's faster. I always say it's faster, especially to quote to I'm... quote Wesley Snipes, always bet on black. Yeah. Passenger 57. Yeah. Love Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Blade. <laughs> and I rigged this. I rigged this. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, oh, bounce. Try again. Bummer. <laughs> All right. We got Mikey P with a two-parter. Did Battalion mess up getting rid of the Thunder for the Thunderstorm? Yes. And also, have you tried the new Battalion boots pre-release? Uh, we've got all the boots sitting in my kitchen right now. We are going to be doing something with boots. I uh, just I do not want to disclose what we're working on because certain people have been stealing ideas from us and implementing them poorly and then when we do a better job it kind of sucks because they're like oh you're just copying this person that's like no we had this idea for a while so yes uh, yeah i had a few people at slash and burn ask me about it what we're doing with boots and i was like i can't say anything i just <laughs> i don't know who's gonna talk to who and i was like i can't say it sorry yeah sorry can't, it's a small can't. industry i can't really say shit that reminds me we need to hit up ben bruce and try to get some k2 boots yeah um, we got to hit up a few people, but we got, we got some time. I'd say, let's hit them up like the end of next month and just be like, Hey, we want them in June. So, yeah. Cause I know Rome sent Rome's going to send stuff. We've got the ride. We've got the battalion. Nidecker is supposed to send stuff. Not sure about 32 vans is probably a no go. I don't know who, I don't know who to talk to over there anymore. Well, they only get their reps only get like one of the samples. They get like a right boot. Yeah. Which would exactly. be fine for us, but like it's kind of a weird ass. Like, can I have one of those? <laughs> well, I don't care about that. It's just like, but the rep isn't even in Colorado anymore. Nope. So, uh, maybe we'll have to go to like powder tools. That might be, that's something we could get in the fall though. Like It is. Like I could. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I could talk to Christie's or something, but yeah, I want to see if the other one, I'd like to get some deluxe boots and, yeah. and see some stuff, but yeah, we got, we got some ideas for boots and stuff that we're going to do that. Um, it's going to be an interesting thing. All right. Uh, all right. We got this one from your guitar one is next year's Mercury any different from the 24 version. I don't know. I wrote it today. Felt a little zippier on edge, just felt like it hooked better and carved better, but that's nice. I I have to do I want to double check the catalog because I feel like something tweaked, but I might be wrong. I think that's why you wrote it, is because something yeah, tweaked. Well, no, on I it. thought it was just because I haven't written it in two years. Did Maybe. I write it last year? Did you write it? No, last you wrote the mega. We didn't even get it last year. We just got the mega last year. Did we? No, you actually did write it last year. Because I just oh, saw the review. I just responded to the review on it today or something. Yeah, I was going to say. Because um, it had no, the red I think, there, I think there's something that did change with it. And I can't, it might be a core profile. I got to double check. I'm going to have to go look at the catalog. I live in my own world where I just like, <laughs> oh, that changed. Oh, that explains this. Yeah. I like the, I like to surprise myself. <laughs> I ride it and then I go, why does this feel different? And then I go and look, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. All right. Okay. We got Raphael Dizalek. Uh, How many riding days do your Thraxxus boots have? Uh, which pair? <laughs> <laughs> so these ones, 
probably have about 200 days on them. Uh, this one's probably about 180 to 200. This one I killed off at about 225. Uh, the ones I'm on now probably only have 60 days on them, I'd say. Yeah. They're getting soft, though. Very park flexy. All right. We got our boy Pat Saransky from Ski Cooper. Spray democracy, spread skiers. No, don't spread skiers. Skiers are awful. Don't spread skiers. Oh, you got nothing. All right. And we got this question from Melvin Del Rosario. Red Springs flush. I noticed my board would slow down out of nowhere. What is happening? My base is waxed and smooth. Probably just need a deeper structure or to go faster. It's, uh, I've had it, it happen sucks. where it's, 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 yeah. sucks. it's a super wet spot in the snow that is actually waterlogged snow. Yeah. And that's your board just suction cupping. I've had it before going down Vagabond. Full speed, pointing it. All of a sudden that's happened and just like straight tomahawk in the slush where it's like thrown me because it stopped me so fast. Like it's just straight up just water, just suction yeah. cupping to the bottom of your board. Like if you have no structure, you'll notice it more. But like get a spring structure put in your board and you'll notice how deep that structure actually is. Like when you look at it, you can see how like all yeah. the waves in it. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, my blood sugar is low. <laughs> Tim Hunt, next step down and flex from the Rome Black Label. Best to go katana or vice. Katana is a lateral move. The only difference between the katana and the black label is literally the high back. The vice would be the logical step down. So, not a 390 boss. It's not ASIM rep. Okay. That, that's, that's the difference. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, we got this one from Alan Poon. What do you think of the new ride moderator? Far more approachable deep fake. I mean, it's still just as, it's almost as damp as the deep fake. Like they ride so similar. But it's it's a little more flexy in the tips. It's easier to sink that tail. It carves a little bit easier because you don't have to put as much force into the camber section. But it's it's basically the equivalent. Like so, if the deep fake is to the algorithm, then the moderator is to the shadow band. That's the way to look at it. So yeah. All right. From our moderator, Jack Offbeat. Pray for Gorb's banana bot. Hashtag training going off the rails. Train going off the rails. For anyone that doesn't catch that reference, we do have a Discord server. If you join it, just understand it is pure fucking chaos at any given point. Yeah. Your name might get changed. Between 3 yeah. and 5 p.m. on Thursday, you can uh, spin to win bananas. Bananas are non-redeemable for anything but bragging rights. <laughs> And allowing you to change someone else's name between three and five p.m. <laughs> on Thursday. <laughs> so, for anyone who wants to go join the Chaos Discord, I strongly recommend it. We'll answer any snowboard question. Well, you're probably going to hear a lot about democracy. <laughs> Almost everyone in the Discord is playing Hell Divers too. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Like, I got blown up by Jeff the other day, and I was like, Jeff, you turned me into Lieutenant Diane. I got no <laughs> legs. <laughs> Ouch, lose a turn. All right. All right, let's see. Okay. Yeah, we answered that one. Oh, here we go. From Tyler H. Any tips on resort closing day pond scam? Try to make it across 
or go for a big splash. It depends on how you want to stoke the crowd out. It's true. Now, like if you're trying to just get bragging rights that you made it across, just go as fast as you can straight and remember to lean on your back foot and treat it like a wakeboard. But if you're trying to stoke the crowd, there's two things you can do. Go near the side of the edge and throw a spray and shoot it with them. And hopefully you got enough speed. You'll be able to, even when you do it, be able to make it to the end. Or you go for the full-blown cannonball. But if you're going to do that, take everything out of your pockets. Cell phone, wallet, anything that you've got yeah. in there. And be fast with getting to your bindings to release because you're going to sink. It's also, it, it knocks the air out of you. No matter yes. what, you hold your breath. Like when you get in that water, it takes the air straight out of your lungs. Like it's it's like getting punched when you get in that water. I've done it before. If you want to go for comfort, try to make it across. If you want to go for the laughs, cannonball. But when uh, I was 16 be- at Holiday Valley, they set up the pond skim so it had a lip into the pond and it was like three yep. feet down. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I can flip into this thing. So I did a flip and I tweaked so hard. My board came up and hit me in the head. And I had this line, <laughs> like a Frankenstein scar down. But the fucked up thing was I didn't take my wallet out of my pocket. And I had my paycheck in there. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like in the bathroom drying it out. And all the guys I worked with in the rental shop and the tune shop were like, Avery, fucking hilarious. And I'm in there just like under the hand dryer, like, like, is that your paycheck you just got today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got to take care of this. <laughs> and they're like, Jesus Christ, Avery. Uh, yeah, that is one thing. Like, take everything out of your pockets. Be as light as possible. Yeah. All right. Raphael Dazalek, uh, Karua Cafe Racer, Ride Peace Seeker. Or the Jones Free Carver 9000 for carving and occasional powder. Free Carver 9000 will be the best of those three for occasional powder. Cafe Racer is literally only good for turning, in my opinion. And people try to argue with me, and I was like, no, no. Like, some dude actually sent me a video, and he's like, see, I can... And I was like, that does not look like you're having fun. It looks like you're fucking struggling. Yeah. I was like, I know you can ride that terrain with it, but if it's not going to look good, what's the point of sending it to me? See, I was thinking the Peace Seeker might be... The Peace Seeker is good in POW, that. but it torsionally, like wide open POW, yeah. But if you go into the trees with it because it's so torsionally stiff, it's such a, you're just jerking around. Yeah, but I'm not taking the Free Carver 9000 in trees either. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I'm not. I want the that thing wide feet, open. I would not go bigger with it. No. But, yeah, I would, see, I'm the other way. I'd go Peace Seeker and then Free Carver on it. It depends on what kind of POW. Like That's true, too. Pow, if it's tree pow. Yeah. Well, yeah, also, depends on how wet the pow is, too. That's true, here, too. Here, I'm going to ride the Peace Seeker. If I'm out in the PNW or in, like, Tahoe, I want the Free Carver. It's going to be stiffer in the nose, too, where it might not get bucked around or anything like that. So, it's between those two. Figure yeah. out which one you like better personally and then just go with one of those. But... Yeah, we're both out on that cafe racer, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just so everyone knows, we're we're about 29 minutes behind on questions. We're not fully in the weeds, but we're getting there. So if you're just tuning in, we do have a poll going in the chat on what kind of haircut should TC get. We're back up with cornrows winning at 31%. <laughs> you get cornrows, I'm getting you a grill. That'd be sick. And it's just going to say TC. Yeah, just the front two teeth. TC, yeah. Just big beaver teeth on the front two. Like TC with like diamond encrusted <laughs> like crystals on there. But I'm I on like the top is gonna be gold and the bottom is gonna be platinum. That's sick. Two-tone. Well, I think there's a grill guy in Aspen. I heard he's good. No. Probably one down on Colfax. <laughs> there definitely is down on Colfax for sure. Yeah. All right, we got another super chat from Jack Offbeat. Exercises for faster ankle recovery. Hashtag CB Days is the truth. That's mm-hmm. true. Should definitely click some of the CB Days links. Do that. That is a sponsored post. Uh, hashtag bugs, not bots. Bugs are easy. Bots are hard. Hashtag democracy. Hashtag SES elected representative of conviviality. 
Hashtag pray for banana bot. Hashtag FOB spring break. It's a lot. So ankle recovery, you want to get like those PT bands, like the, the, the elastic stretchy ones and you tie it to like a chair or something. You sit and you just, you do the up and down with it. And then you do the side to side with it. And you just do that a little bit. And that's a really good one for range of motion and resistance training. And then when that starts to feel better, then you start getting into like leg lifts and stuff to build that up. At least that's, that's what I did. Um, for myself, like I've sprained my ankles so many times where every time the doctor's like, I don't know how you keep doing it. Like you should be breaking your ankle instead of spraining it. But the best way I've done it is do the alphabet with your ankles before you go and ride. And then after you go and ride before everything gets tightened up, just like super easy go slow watch tv and just do that same with like if you're just watching tv just kind of pull that one out or go in circles like 30 seconds one way and then swap and go 30 seconds the other way just try to promote those ligaments to get moving and like stretch out pretty much because the more they can move and stretch the less you're going to get hurt factually true the other thing is uh if you're not taking them already collagen peptides are the truth yeah i'm a big big collagen peptide guy those have been they've made my life so much different like normally this time of year i'm fucking crippled and i'm like (laughs) okay i'm i'm tired but i'm not dead yeah yeah i really like fish oils too like fish oil play those big ones that make your breath stink those ones are that'll it works the big ones are suppositories dude you're supposed to put it up your butt (laughs) No wonder it's so hard to swallow. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> put them way up there, TC, where no one will find them. <laughs> Full blown prison pocket. Yeah, just bleh. you gotta put them up to the fifth knuckle. Keister it. You know the fifth knuckle. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> just, bleh. So, yeah. People are learning all sorts of new things today. (laughs) Oh, where are we going? Oh, click the links. All right, we got this super chat from Russ Jack. Picked up a used Karua Pencil 164 for $220 US US today after lurking marketplace. Can't wait to test it out tomorrow morning at J. Hashtag, it's not even hashtag, it's spin slash jackpot. That's total Discord chat. It's total Discord. No, the pencil should yeah, be fun. Smoke deal. Is good. If the snow's good, like get out on a groomer and just go rip some carves. The pencil yeah. is a super fun board. I love the pencil. Oh, I rigged Ooh. it. Good, because I didn't All know right. what the question mark was this week. <laughs> There's a question mark. I don't even know. I keep saying I'm going to change it, and then I don't do anything. All right. Stay anonymous. Is wave cell on and on helmets as safe as MIPS? It's different, but yes. I mean, they have to go through all that rigorous testing and stuff. Yeah, wave cell, the way I've had it explained to me back when I was at Evo. So MIPS is for, like, the impact. Wave cell also helps when you like skim off of something. If it's not just like a straight like thud smack, uh, it helps with that. But then it also helps with like those glancing blows where if you're like riding along and like skip off the ground with your head, it's supposed to help that as well. Cause the wave cell is supposed to allow the helmet to kind of torque a little bit in there yeah. instead of, instead of it moving your head with the foam. It's supposed to kind of allow a little give there is what the way I've been explained. So that's like the same thing that MIPS does. It's like, so like it mimics the rotation of the brain and the fluids and stuff. Yeah. So so I don't know. It's supposed to be like twist this way impact. It's supposed to be more versatile on their impacts. I don't know if it's true or not. It's expensive. Uh, But yeah. All right. We got this one from Rick Kinzer. How hard is it to put new cords in the 32 uh, lash double bow? It's not that hard. Shouldn't be that hard. As long as you've got the guard, the guide wire. That's it, right? Or no, that one's still the steel cable, isn't it? It depends what year. Yeah. Well, this is the new one. Well, yeah. Yeah. So it depends on what year. 
But just remember, like, if you're going to do the lower, you start and work your way up. That's it. Yeah. Like, always. And yeah. And it's, it's, it's not that hard. Kind of weird. Uh, as long as like your housing for it is all intact, it should be yes. fine. Like, yeah, if your housing has worn, then shit starts to get weird. Yeah, and you're gonna be standing there pushing rope. Yeah, just the worst. Just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, we got this one from Fizzled. Any experience with Zeal goggles? They say their anti fog is permanent in the lens and doesn't rub off. Are they any good? They're big. They're very, yeah. very like big, sticking out and wide um we actually got a couple pairs to test we should probably finish those reviews yeah yeah we should film those at some point yeah we the were, goggles we, have been hard for us this year because of every like we've got 200 boards and bindings we gotta ride so it's like some things had to get put to the back burner a little bit next year when we don't have to ride 200 250 products then we can transition more into that shit but we need, uh, more, we need to make more money to hire more people so that we can ride, ride more and review less. So they yeah. can, we need a review team of 10. Yeah. That would be very easy. That's 20 products per person. Yeah. I mean, I fuck, we could even do 40 products per person. And according to TJ or whatever, that's a full season. I don't know what we do with the rest of our lives, though. That's too much spare time. There's not that I don't know many. How someone's, I don't know how he's like saying that 40 boards is going to take him so long. He's got to go to Mammoth. I was like, huh? What? I wish we had 40 boards left. I wish I only had 40 boards left. Like, I'd ride a board a day. I would be chilling all season or ride two in a day and be like, hey, I'm not going to ride today. 20 days. To. 20 days. 20 yeah. days. Hang it all up. We're under chilling. A We're like, chilling. Fuck. I had to ride two boards today just because I got to meet up with the Arbor rep. I had to go ride the Arbor Element Rocker. Whoa. Oh. I ate shit on a heel side carve on that thing because the ground gave out underneath me because they had to pack <laughs> So I was going into Peace Park. I did, there's two dudes just sitting around thumb jacking their queef holds. So I did a big Euro carve on my toe side around them, transitioned over to a heel side carve, got to the edge of the trail, and it just crumbled underneath me. And I got bucked and I was like, God damn it. Was it the board or was it me? And I'm looking around and I was like, Oh, it was the ground. It wasn't any of us. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's my life. Oh, okay. Let's see. So we got uh, Jonathan Galura. I'm currently using a ride war pig 142 and vans. OGs, size 41 Europe weight of 58 kilograms, five foot six of height and not as strong of a rider. Thanks in advance. So are you asking if that's good or not? Or do you want validation? I was going to say you're validated. You're validated. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Well, we've already answered uh, Rick's question, but he asked it again in the Super Chat. So we'll give him a spin. Is that video out? Or do we, do we get the bow video? No, he out? asked it twice. He okay. Asked it twice. Yeah, so. No, I mean, did we get the bow video? No, we haven't done that one yet. No, because remember, I accidentally deleted it. No, I did not remember that. I told you that. I was like, hey, I think I deleted. I can't remember what hard drive I put it on. I know I put it on a hard drive, but I don't know which one. And there's like 10 hard drives. And I'm like going through. Damn. And I was like, is it on one Ben has? I don't know. It might so, be on one Ben has. Let's hope so. Because I was, a, I actually feel like I did well on that one. That only did. took like, that only took us like 30 minutes for yeah. like a 10 minute video. I was like, that was pretty good. <laughs> and we bullshit a lot when we film. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got Miles Clark demoed a Nitro Pantera that I fell in love with for carving and looking at the dart as a more versatile board. No, don't. You're good. <laughs> what would you recommend for laid out carves? Other boards welcome. 11.5 foot, 6 foot, 390 pounds. You got a Pantera, dude. Go fast. You're good. You're good. You, you, it's, yeah. You're, you're good. Don't. You're overthinking this. Yeah, that thing holds its own with any carving board, so you'll be you'll be totally fine, dude. All right. Validated. We got this super chat from S. Scott 1986. Taking a break from spin to donate to the stream. Always fun to ride with AI Avon. I'm CGI. <laughs> I have learned so much from AI Avon. I'm CGI. <laughs> Hashtag fuck Gilson. Hashtag I want to get my self Gilson canceled. Hashtag Nick Nick Gilson is a cook for snow cook for snowboard Jesus. So last night we decided in the Discord that the guys were going to see how long until they got blocked by Gilson for picking on them. Because, you know, I don't snowboard according to Gilson's yeah. snowboards. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
strange. I just, because I refuse to validate a shitty company that makes a shitty product that hires shitty influencers. It's just shit on shit on shit. It's just a cesspool of shit <laughs> all mixed together. Although I am at the point where I'm like, maybe I will buy a Gilson board so I can measure the width of the inserts and show everyone what people have been sending me where the inserts are off by to one side by half a centimeter or more. That'd like but they're high end quality American made boards. I was like, what made by fucking meth heads in Pennsylvania? Like Jesus Christ. It's definitely not the Amish. No, if, if it was the Amish one, it would be about this thick <laughs> and it would probably ride better. I was going to say, I was like, you know, if this all goes bad, maybe we'll just see if the Amish will start pressing boards for us. If this goes bad. I'm going to become Amish, get myself a beard <laughs> and wife and have 35 kids. Hey. Die by the time I'm 50. They're looking for new men, you know, always. So you just want to be in the right spot when the girls go on Rum Springa. <laughs> yeah, that's so, fair. little known fact. Everyone thinks the Amish are prudes. No, they're down to fuck. <laughs> they are. Okay. No, like little known fact, premarital sex is not a spit not a sin with the Amish. They will fuck. Like if if the buggy is a rockin', don't come a knockin'. They are out there getting it on. Like, so when I was, I grew up in Amish country, so we'd have like bonfires and the Amish guys would just show up with the chicks and those girls, they'd get drunk and they'd get loose. I mean, they can drink. What do they drink? A dandelion wine? Cider. Just... Hard cider, okay. mead. Um, mead. How you know, is mead? If you, if you gave them whiskey or something, they would drink it for sure. Well, yeah, I think Beer. whiskey's been around forever. Yeah. But no, a lot of them were drinking. Um, yeah, a lot of them were drinking like shit that they fermented themselves and stuff. So, yeah, but yeah, the the Amish are uh, they're very interesting. <laughs> I've had a lot of interactions with the Amish when I lived in Western New York. I've just dealt with Mennonites, never actual full on Amish. I had some Mennonite neighbors too when I was in high school. They they were weird. Yes, like they were super 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 weird. Like the Amish, you kind of just know what you're going to get. You know, you're just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, like so they have a sixth grade education at the max and they're going to build a barn in a day. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be, it's going to last long. <laughs> well, like when I was a kid, I'd, you know, I'd watch something and I was like, why are they pulling up to the Home Depot to pick up those Mexicans for labor? And then it, it dawned on me one day, I was like, oh, that's what we do with the Amish. We just pull up and pick up the Amish for labor. And that, except the Amish don't have a sliding scale. They're like, this is what you pay me per day. And you have to pick me up and drive me to and from, and we don't work on Sundays. That's fair. Fair, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. That's union. Yeah. <laughs> they're very, they're very regimented. They're very good yeah. at that. Like, it's funny because when I was back in New York for Christmas, my dad and I had to go over to Amish country because uh, he had um, a vanity made up for this cabin that he inherited so we had to go pick it up. So we were like, ah, oh, is this where we pick up the Chinese made wares? And he's like, oh, I ship a lot of stuff to China. I was like, wait, what? And he's like, oh, yeah, the Chinese just love. I was like, how did the Chinese know about you? And he's like, oh, we have a website. And I was like, wait, <laughs> what? And he's like, well, I don't run it. It's not me. I pay someone to do it. And I was like, huh? And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I also sell these electric uh, fireplaces. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, Abe, you're killing me. And he's like, oh, no, it's all good. I have seen those. I remember there used to be like infomercials on those electric fireplaces. Like, be like, get an Amish made fireplace. I'm like, how does that work with electric in there? Like, so the, you know, most of those were made in Western New York, like a couple miles from where I grew up. And it was funny. It started with one guy that figured that he, he just, he brought them the electric fireplace itself. And he's like, can you make this? And they did it. And he had it in his house and people were asking. So he started selling it to his friends and then he turned it into a whole industry. And there's like a whole farm of Amish that when they're not farming, they're building these fireplaces. They were it's sweet. The weirdest freaking shit. And you I like roll up them. and you're like, this is so weird. And you go in and they've got powered bandsaws that are all gas powered and shit. And oh, really? Like, wait, wait, it, and they're like, well, it's not hooked to the grid. So, you know, we're living off the line. I'm like, you still have to ride the horse and buggy to the gas station to pump the gas to bring him back out here. That's just extra steps. That's funny. 
Uh, I got ran over by a horse and buggy in my car once. <laughs> All right. Ran up and over and then fell off the roof of the car. Jesus. And then uh, my parents' old neighbor, she she didn't hit one kid with her, one Amish kid with her car. She hit two. Hmm. Drunk driving. Like yeah. I, just, I was going to say not the same kid. Not the same kid. Well, the one time she hit an actual horse and buggy, and the other time, I think she hit one on the side of the road. <laughs> All right. Those Amish, they just be walking in the road. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, well. <sighs> Maybe Nick Gilson should go down to Amish country and learn what actual quality construction is. Oh, next question gets a spin. Well, let's find one here. We'll take this one from Ali Zaccarani. As an owner of a rosin sashimi and a split after ours, are you telling me I don't need a sashimi? You don't. You're good. Just go. You're covered. You got it. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Don't worry about it. Well, this isn't blank. All right. We got secret reluctant Jesus. I realize this is a basic question, but what's the smallest waist width that you would recommend for an 11.5 Vans boot? How small is too small? Stop looking at the waist width. Stop. Start looking at the insert width. Take the tip and tail width. Subtract the waist width. Divide that number by two. Add it back to the waist width. Roughly. Not accounting for the side cut radius. That's what the width will be at the inserts, theoretically. Roughly. It's, it's it, obviously yeah. if you go more in, it's going to be more narrow. If you go more out, it's going to be wider, but it's, yeah. a, it's a rough one in there. But I mean, you're fine. 260. 11.5 Vans boots are like a it's 13 big. with other brands. I'd say nothing smaller than a 264, probably. Yeah. Yeah, like, 260 is where you want to be. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, those are those are some beefy boots. I can't believe I ever wore vans. I was thinking about that. When I first moved down to Summit County, I was in the Vans Fargos and just ended up in K2s by accident. Mm. I, I was like, oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh my god, have you seen how many antique Bindings have been on the hill this week. Yes, we like, saw. I saw a bunch in Steamboat too. It was ridiculous. Dude, there is a shitload of Burton custom freestyles from '98, and I'm like looking at them, and they've got that chalky white, and I'm like, these things are about to break. And these dudes were like being weird, and everyone's like, you can ride with them, and I was like, that guy's gonna fall. That guy doesn't know how to snowboard. I'm gonna stay right here. I look. I, I, you guys look like you know what you're doing. You're not on rental equipment. And the guy with the old school Burton custom freestyles, high back up, fell getting off Woodward Express. I watched the high back go right up his ass crack. No, he I just you were gonna say it snapped. And up like there. he didn't even yell. He was just like we and sat on his tail and just rode it out. And I was like, that guy really enjoyed getting sodomized by his high back. But I'm pretty sure he cracked the high back in half. I can see that because it had the locking high backs too, and he had them locked. Oh yeah, that's old as fuck. I was like, Oof, Jesus. I was like, locking high backs. You always locked the front one. You never locked the rear. You disconnected it and put the screw in because then if that chairlift hit it, it would fold it down and not break it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. It's. uh, Yeah, the antiques out there, though. Holy shit. There's, there's so a lot. Stuff. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we'll take this one from Jonathan Galera. Should I get a 142 or 147 Ride King 2025 for, for park introduction and butter small jumps? I'm currently using a Ride Warpig 142. Bands OG size uh, 41 EU. Weight 100 or wait 58 kilograms, 56 in height, and not a strong rider. Get the 42. I rode the new kink the other day. That board fucks. I See, like that. If that board was good for what it was, like it blew me away how well that thing rode. 
But if you already have the 42 war pig, it's going to ride more like that 47. So that's it's, why I was thinking a 47 yeah, actually, get the 47 on that one. Because you want that but, camber in your life. But it depends too. Are, are you going in the park with it only? Well, he says in the park? to butter small jumps. So let's just say, assume that they go 42. Camber park get the 47. Okay, then go 47. Because it's still going to be stiffer, or it's still going to be softer than your war pig. Yeah. All right. Okay. We got our boy Cam, medium of media. Deluxe boots would be awesome. And also, where do you try them and buy? Do you guys know anywhere in Colorado that sells them? Did Evo carry them? He carried the kids' ones. Oh. The collab with Union. Um, I, I remember there was a place that, that, that did. And Silverthorne used to carry them. I don't, they don't carry them anymore. And Christie's carried them at one point for like one season. Yeah, they don't anymore. Oh. Um, isn't there that store in Vail that does? Is it uh, Buzzes? Yeah, I it, thought Buzzes. Or is it Transition Sports and Avon? I thought it was Buzzes, but I could be wrong on that. I'd give Buzzes a call and see. Buzzes Board I would, show. yeah. Um, oh, doesn't Image down in Denver carry them? I don't know. Uh, maybe. That's a hard one. That is. All right. All right, Jonah McCleary, spin for spreading democracy across the cosmos. Hashtag $3 mystery shots. Hashtag tax the frogs. This man knows what's up. He's witnessed a napalm strike on some bugs. Ouch. This isn't blank. <laughs> this is a great question from Paul WB. Is putting structure yeah. in your base at home a pain in the ass? What all do you need? Well, you're going to need to go buy about a $7,000 grind right machine. You can get an old one. You might be able to find one for about $3,500, but it's probably going to need no. to be rewired and it's going to be rusty as shit. Then you got to get the right belts for it. Then you're going to have to get a new stone because it's probably chipped. Then you got to cut the stone in there. No, don't, don't, you can't do it at home. Don't do it. Just take it to the shop. That stone itself is about a thousand dollars for the grind right, brand new. They're about hundred D's. They are not cheap. <laughs> the one that they had at Powder Tools, brand new, was a hundred. Really? And like, yeah. Grind right. We got right. a used one at the one shop. I don't. I think we got it on a foreclosure auction or something because we got it super dirt cheap. I think we only paid like seven grand for it, but the stone was chipped. But we were tuning mainly skis, and it was chipped on the side. So I knew where the chip was. So, oh, so and I kept it cutting it, and I finally – I was able to cut most of the chip out. So, like, if I did a board, I knew how to – like, I'd have to change the pressure on the feed wheel, but I could do it, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't notice it. So, But, yeah, you're going to want to go to your local shop and just have them put it in because that is yeah. – and those things are so hard to find used, like – the one they've had at Powder Tools is probably 30 years old at this point, 10,000 pounds. And once they set it in there, they haven't moved it. Like, you cannot move that machine. Once it's there, it's there. Like, you have to take it apart piece by piece to get that thing in and out. Like, it, they're tanks. And they're a bitch to know how to use, or they're a bitch to learn how to use if you've never used one before. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll take this one from Jason Whitrock. Going to be in Summit County this weekend. Where should I take my board to get structure in the base? Mono Sarah and Dylan. If Mono Sarah can't do it, there's Pups Glide Shop in Breckenridge or there's Lone Star Sports. Those are the big three that I would do. You could also go to the Christie's across the street from the Walmart. Um, those guys aren't great at it. They're not bad at it. Like in a quick fix, they're... They're solid enough if you're not being picky. Otherwise, if you want to go for the high-end one, there's also the tune shop that's like two down from them by the window store in the same plaza. But yeah. How's that's... the racer's edge? Is that good? I I haven't had anything. So I you, do you know I used to be the manager of that? No. I see the so, commercials all the time. So Racer's Edge used to be owned by a company, by a family called the Dilds, and they owned like 48 of the subways down in fucking Denver and Colorado Springs. So they thought they could own it. They, their daughter went to Steamboat for ski and snowboard business. So they bought her a ski shop. She was a pill popper. 
So they hired me to be the manager and basically I had to wrangle her. She lived two blocks away and she'd be like, I can't come down and open the shop. And I lived in Silverthorne. So I had to take the bus all the way from Silverthorne to open the shop because she couldn't walk two blocks. But um, the new people that own it, my friend Chris Krantz is in there now. And Krantz is a solid dude. I just, I don't know. Like I have never taken anything in there, but I'm assuming like it's a tune, it's a race shop. So they're probably pretty solid. Like, I mean, I can see their front door from my living room. Window. I know. That's why I'm like, <laughs> but, but, uh, Christie's in Silverthorne too, or Dylan, I guess it's Dylan. Uh, but that's the one I would, I'm taking my board to tomorrow, actually. Oh, to, to Creston over at Christie's at the Dylan. That dude, I'll tell you, that guy takes his time. He'll make sure that whole base is completely smooth before he puts that structure on. Like he oh, is. Yeah. Anal if about Creston, it. So if you're going and Creston's doing the work, I trust it. The rest there's, of the carnies that work there. Uh, there's another guy that used to, um, he used to be the winter Steiger rep. And now he Dave? just does. Yeah, I think so. Dave, I would yeah. trust. Yeah. He's there. He's there now too. He's like, I'm just doing this as like a little side gig. Cause they just bought a restaurant as well, I believe. But he, uh, yeah, he's the guy to go to as well. Like he blew my mind with some knowledge. Like we were talking about putting structure on it. It was like a five minute conversation. I was like, oh shit, this guy really knows his stuff. He's like, yeah, I, I should. I was the rep. Like I went and fixed all these. I'm like, oh, awesome. I think that's the same so, guy I used to work with at Mountain Sports Outlet. And then he mm -hmm. worked for Keystone Sports and ran their tune shop. And that yep. was a winter steiger. And I'm pretty sure he got hired from, because he rewired the whole machine himself. Because yeah. it was so broken and he got so fed up. He found the manuals, rewired it, recut it, came up with all sorts of crazy structure patterns. And then yeah, I, that dude I think rocks. that's it. That's, it sounds like the same guy. Yeah, I think but it's yeah, that, that dude rocks. Yeah. Like, so go there. They should be able to get it done within the day, too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Coming soon. All right. Got a super chat from my knees or cheese. Gorb lost his virginity before his father. Oh, we're doing Gorb facts again? Are we just roasting Gorb? Where is Gorb? He hasn't been in here today. I'm kind of disappointed in him. Probably has to work his day job. Working. I was going to say working like a loser. No. A loser. Spray skiers. Spray skiers. All right. Uh, we got Timothy C. Is it overlapping or worthy to get a battalion disaster? With my indoor survival 22, 23, or should I just save the 250 for a future board? Save the money. You don't need it. Yeah. You're good. Just save your money. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. We got our uh, lady, Maxine Blizzard. Hello, lovelies. We're back after a disaster. This New Year's trip to Italy. Lost the phone, the flu, and every Italian and their kids were there. Not good. Oh, no. What do you do if you lose a phone in another country? Cry. Yeah, do you, do you like, try to buy one in another country and then... The best thing you could do is hop on the internet and just have it shipped to wherever you're staying. That way, then you can just plug it in and do everything. Yeah. So either that, or if you have a Google number that's transferable, and then you do yeah. that. So, oh, you lose. Bummer. All right. Ali Zacharon, dumbest spring break shenanigans you've witnessed. Well, besides the guy in the parking lot today, that was pretty fucking stupid. You put your kid's job at Jeopardy and his housing. Well, I was going to say, we didn't witness it, but those two guys uh, decided to sled down uh, the half pipe last year. Oh, you mean the totally tubular toboggan team that flew off the yeah. end of the half pipe yeah. and splattered? Yeah. The yeah, kid's those guys. is still on the roof of Dukes. Yeah, that, I mean, we didn't see it, but that was the dumbest thing I had ever heard, probably. I mean, I don't know. I've seen some dumb shit this week. Like, I mean, actually, you know what the dumbest thing is? Right when spring break started, that car that just drived right up to the lift. That's the dumbest thing I've seen. I mean, the guy that drove off the bridge that goes over the underpass to get to Loveland, like, just literally drove off the westbound lane and just plopped down last week. <laughs> okay. Like, Where are you going, bud? Like that. I don't know. All the people that drive into oncoming traffic at Copper – 
there's three lanes. The right lane goes in, the middle lane comes out, and the left lane is a bus lane. It's pretty fucking obvious. Yeah. Yeah, that's happened twice in the past two weeks. Yeah. That's that's some dumb shit. I mean, I've mm-hmm. seen that. I watched someone fall off the chairlift yesterday. That's pretty at at A Basin? On uh, Montezuma, like they made it past the load line and then fell. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, like I was like, they were on the chair. Lifts are short. I was like, none of those lifts are short. Like, what the hell were they doing? I don't know. It was just like that. I watched um I watched two kids try to take the T bar at Copper the other day. The one kid was probably five, and the other kid that was definitely the older brother was like 12. So mm-hmm. there's a height difference. And basically the older brother got pulled underneath. Because it was under the little kid. He had to pull it all the way down. Little kid didn't know what to do and held on to it, but he didn't have enough weight, so it picked him up. So he let yeah. go in the air. They just exploded. I was like, I mean, why? Why? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess everybody was riding the Palma at Howlson the day after. Yeah. And Isaiah ran one of our friends over because she fell off the Palma, and he just kept going. He's like, I'm not st- I can't stop. So he just kind of ollied and just like rode right over her legs and just kept going. I was, I uh, like, I was riding the T-bar at Breck years ago, which I'd never ride the T-bar at Breck. Cause it, why would I do that when I could take six chair to the Imperial and get the same line and, and I yeah. get to sit, but I was taking it one time. Cause I think I was going in like cucumber bowl or whatever the fuck it is. And this girl, maybe it was a dude. I don't know. It might've been a metrosexual. Um, uh, <laughs> fucking falls in the middle of the rut at the steep point. And it's like, go around. And I was like, where? If I can't, I'm trying to put my weight into it. And they like wouldn't do it. And I was like, I'm going over you. And they're like, no, you're not. You won't do it. Oh my God, you're going over. And I just rode right up and over him. I didn't give a fuck. It's funny like, to me. Yelling. And then the guy behind him hit him too. <laughs> you got time to get out of the way. Just slide to the side. Two feet to the left or right and you're safe. Yeah. But it's like, okay. You know, I don't know. I was too uh, good. Oh, I was out in uh, Union Meadows the other day, like in the steep trees, you know, like the closer mm-hmm. side. This woman's like, this is my third time snowboarding. I was like, then why the fuck are you in here? Did you not see the big sign that says don't come out here? I don't know how she got all the way over there. I don't either. I guess it's just a heel side traverse. <laughs> Must be professional. No, no, you got to have speed to get over there. I mean, you have to go uphill to go downhill. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to go through, like, a Palma line. It's impressive. Yeah. I'll give it to her. Crushing it for her third day. She got into a zone that's not easy to get to, even if you are a good snowboarder. Oh, I, my, I told you about the guy whipping his dick out on the pack track, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's one for everyone. Monday powder day, eight inches. Coming through, there's a flat section in Union Meadows before you can get back to the run out to the waterfall. Um, you basically hit this pump track and you've got to pump it. And it's kind of uphill and then it flattens out, but it's a blind turn. So I come around the corner. Dude is, he's stepped out of his step-ons. He's got his board in the track blocking it. He's half in it and he's just with dick out, just pissing on it. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I got to pee. And I was like... There's literally trees 10 feet away, man. You don't need to whip yeah. your dick out. We're all like ski school is coming through with like little kids and shit. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, man. And so like the guy's yelling at me and he's like, and I'm like, dude, you're in the way. You are the problem. And I was like, you fucking tourist. I'm not a tourist. And I was like, you're going to tell me you're not a tourist with those fucking step-ons. <laughs> like, fuck you, dude. Your pants are so tight. You've got them tucked into your boot. <laughs> So, well, I was like that guy that was literally just pissing off Sierra chair. Like we looked right and he was literally standing in those trees right there. Like, what are you doing, dude? Like, you're not even hiding. You're in like the middle of a run right now. Yeah. There was a guy one day coming out of Peace Park, those trees right at the bottom before you get to where you load, go down to load the chair. He was Mm -hmm. right there. Mountain safety could see him. I was like, you guys aren't even going to say anything about this. Ski school's right there looking at his dick. Yeah. Those are dudes. Those are dudes that get off on exhibitionism. They are. I, okay. <laughs> those guys do. They want people to see them like that. 
I'm out of M&M's. Uh-oh. And soda. Help. I'm out of M&M's. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We got Piff looking to add another board. I own a Yes Dicey and a Rome Service Dog. What to get next? 203 Quiver Cannon. You need, you need a carving board. Actually, yeah. That would probably if anything, make more sense. If anything, that's what I would say. You need something that's just going to like hold an edge, lay it over. Because your service dog, party board, dicey, park board. Like you, That's what I would say. Like a, a sweet carving board, like a Megadeth. If you want to spend that kind of money, like just something in that same realm. TC's so going to check be out our top five Megadeths carving now boards. to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, He's like, I wrote it. it. Now I understand why Averin liked it. Yeah, everybody needs it. Uh, just watch our top five uh, carving boards. Carving uh, cruisers. One of those. Yeah, carving cruisers. That, you know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. New top five yesterday. Hopefully everyone caught it. Top five pro models. Yep. Got a lot of, a lot of questions on that one. Yeah. How did really this pro cool. model get left off? And you're like, well, dude, they're... A lot of people bitching and moaning that the T-Rice Pro wasn't on there. I was like, because that board fucking sucks. That it and, uh, fucking sucks. That board is a pile of suck. It has been a pile of suck every time I've ridden it. I'm like, ugh, ugh, ugh. I, uh, yeah, that and the antidote. People are like, well, that's Sage Cosenberg's Pro model. I'm like, it is, but it's just not on the list. Yeah. You know? Like, right. same with the Librig. They're like, dude. And you're like, nope. Okay, so we got next question gets a spin. Let's find one here. All right. Uh, okay. No, man, we're all over the place. I think we're finally catching up. We're getting we're there. 20, 25 minutes in the hole. We're getting there. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Got to be one up here somewhere. Where is it? Ah, okay. We'll take this one from Stay Anonymous. Speaking of TJ, are his board reviews worth it? If you feel they are, then yes. I feel like you guys are the only people for gear questions or reviews. I think the difference between us and everyone else that does reviews one they don't do the amount that we do and two they don't have the knowledge base from working in shops that we do to answer questions so we can be like like one of the things i noticed was someone was asking me about a binding from like oh four and i was like oh yeah i sold the shit out of those back then well what would be yeah. comparable and i was like well this is logically the successor but actually it was this binding to this binding to this binding then it became this binding and they're like oh and I was like, and I've written them all. And they're like, oh. And I usually, I broke it down for them and what they could expect. And they were like, so this is not going to be anything. And I was like, it's it's like you went back in time and you met your great, 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 great grandfather. That's the binding you have. And then it came forward and it meets you today. You can see the lineage there, but it's not. And I think that's the big difference. With it. I don't know. I don't watch other people's reviews because I just think. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've watched the one. I had to watch the one on the free carver 9,000. Cause I was like working on something and it popped up on YouTube and I was like, okay, I want to see what these guys said about it. And it was, uh, was it the good ride? Yeah, it was like 25 minutes long and I was like, I cannot do this. So I was fast forward and through it. His, uh, his buddy, I guess. Yeah. His, his younger buddy was like, I rode this thing everywhere. It's fun. And he's like, no, groomers only and i'm like oh yeah that was a okay, good i agree for sure. i was like i agree with your buddy on this one like yeah take it in the park if you want to i took that bitch off jumps like oh so did i i hit some rails with it but i was like yeah dude i got a full pull on large marge 25 minutes like that's a long time oh. a long time to talk about one board did I tell you I got the flat down flat down at the top of central before the big line the other day with a pow board yeah, I watched you, I think. Oh, yeah, you were right. You talk... I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I yeah we were smash pow on the side of the jumps. Yeah. But, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if people feel they get value from someone else's reviews, then go. My biggest gripe is people will watch that and then come to me and be like, why did he say, I don't know, fucking ask them. I don't want, like, you're asking me to go watch a review that's now 10 minutes long. I don't want to fucking watch that. Yeah, I know no, what it happened I mean, when I wrote it. And I feel like I've been doing this long enough that I'm pretty much nine times out of 10 going to knock it out of the park. Yeah. I mean, like, I, it's good to have them around. Like, just because, I mean, it's it's just like any competition, really. Like, Are they really competition, though? I don't know. If you want to say like that. I feel like we're up but here like, and everyone's kind of down here. And they think they're but, way up here. And I'm like, you guys are running that's why we, We're running a marathon. That's why we need them. To, to show that otherwise it's like this is what you got you got us and you're like are they good are they not we don't know but then when i don't know prepared, let me tell you how frustrated i got this past week i almost emailed the good ride people and be like you need to fix your fucking thumbnails because they look like shit your titles are crap your affiliate links are shit you don't answer questions on time like up your fucking game dude I was about to just read them a riot act and be like, you want to say we're competition? You're not even in the same league as me, man. You're fucking not even triple A ball. You're beer league, dude. Like, you're the fucking, like, the local factory softball team trying to pretend that you could go take on the, the fucking Yankees. Like, ah, uh, it's like, I just look at it and I'm like, ah, just do better. Like, <laughs> fuck i'd love to have real competition that makes us want to do more but at the same time i'm getting ready to retire and it's feeling great i had that epiphany yesterday when i was riding around at the basin i was like man tc's come such a long way we get one more person i'm retired i'm reviewing like 20 things a year <laughs> i'm fucking stoked yeah. i'm gonna do live streams i'm gonna do top fives that are comedic and maybe I'll just show people how to set up bindings and shit. That's it. And I'm yeah, it's okay not bad. Like I'm ready to retire. 20 years come October. I have done snowboard reviews. 20 fucking Damn. years. There is nobody that has done them as long as I have. I'm over it. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's get a speed round in really quick here. Grippy's oh, yeah, really whining at me to go out. You want to do a speed round after this? Let's do a speed. Let's do a speed round. He's he's looking at me like it's time. I'm like, oh shit. Okay. All right, right. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, we'll take this one from Zamergi JWT. Listen, Uncle Laver and collagen peptides helped huge with my major ankle sprain and major shoulder sprain. All right, cool. Spin. <laughs> Glad it worked. Toe side, never. All right. Our boy letters. Union is overrated. Hashtag soapbox. Hashtag fight me, Scott. <laughs> I don't know. Union's actually making steps. I was joking around with uh, Johan this weekend about that, though. About how they had number one binding for 20 years and just changed the color on it. Nothing else. <laughs> All right. Next question gets a spin. Let's find one down here. Do, 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 do. Oh, God. All right, we'll take this one from Mike B. Been seeing a lot more posts lately from people cracking their cap. It is all in the same spot, like, like a tear without any dent from impact, influx of kooks you can't land, or actual manufacturing. It's a lot of people. I've seen it. It's always in heavy snow. They lean too far forward, and they overflexed it and snapped it. They don't understand it. And they're like, this should be a warranty defect. I've seen so many photos of that, and I was like, and I'll leave a comment. Like, someone will send it to me, and I'll be like, Landed a little back seat, tomahawked, dug your nose in. Yep. And they're like, yeah, I was like, not a manufacturing defect. That's you. And they're like, well, how do I stop that? And I was like, don't fight the rag doll. Go limp. And they're yeah. like, what? And I was like, you go limp. You're going to bounce once or twice. And then you're just going to go. Pfft. But when you're fighting it, it keeps like you're fighting the momentum and it keeps going. You're just going to hurt yourself. So, yeah. 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 Click those links. All right. Melvin Del Rosario wants to spin. Boom.
Nothing. All right. We got BZMs. I need to move to the mountains while I'm in my shred and destroy era of ripping blues and spraying slow signs. Does Summit have a strongman gym? And when will you lower the property value more? I mean, dude, the only way I could lower it more is if I bought an AK-47 and once a week I went outside and fired off a clip. Yeah, just be dust pumps every once in a while. You know, just be like, ah, you know, I mean, we need to have like a either a mass suicide or a drug war on Main Street to drop property. And even then, it probably wouldn't do shit at this point. I'm pretty sure a nuclear bomb could go off and property values would go up up here. Uh, yeah. But we do. We might have a strongman gym. I think it might be in Dil or in Frisco. <laughs> I think that I think it is in Frisco because I see a really jacked dude walking every time, and I'm like, "Damn, dude, okay." Strutting in shorts in the middle of winter. Yeah, there you go. Next question gets a spin. All right, um, let's take. We'll take this one from Dominic Rosero. Looking into a Jones Frontiers progressing rider. I'm not sure if I should get a 152 or 156. I'm five seven, 155 pounds, size 8.5 boots. If you're a weak rider and you want a really good learning curve, 52. If you're a competent rider, but you want to build really good fundamentals, 56. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's right. perfect. All right. I rigged this. All right. We'll take this one from Rye Guy. Astro ASIM, full wrap, Atlas. Uh, Antidote, Passport, Alchemist, Excavator, which bindings and board combo are you going with? Hashtag Gorb goes to strip clubs for the buffet. Dude, Casa Diablo. It's the vegan buffet of Portland. Got to go there. It's all you can eat clams. They're vegan. <laughs> They're vegan. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Strange. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I choose okay, my so here's, how, here's what I would do. For the Antidote, I would put the full wraps on it or the or the Atlas, but probably go with the full reps. Passport, Astro, ASIM, Alchemist, full wrapper, Atlas, Excavator, ASIM, Wrap. That's what I would do. Okay. What about you? Yeah, I'd go Antidote, either... I'd probably go ASIM or Atlas on that. Alchemist, I would go full wrap. Passport, I'd go ASIM or Atlas, whatever. Doesn't really matter on that one. And then Excavator... Yeah, probably ASM on that one just because you do have that big nose and that'd be more fun to butter on than the Atlas. Yeah. And it's damper. Cool. Yeah. Give that a spin. Oh, cooked. Next person gets a spin. All right, we'll take this one from Pat Zaransky. Wait, one of those guys is still up on the roof? No, the totally tubular toboggan team died in the base area of copper. One of his boots is still up on the roof. Yeah. Big difference. The bodies were pulled off the mountain. Although we could start a rumor that his body's just up there and the crows are pecking at it. I was going to say the crows have been eating it all year. I remember when I worked at Woodward, the dude fell out of the fourth story window of the edge and died. Well, I mean, we could say that because when you walk by, like, past... Uh, the bubble lift it smells like shit. It smells like it could be a dead body. So people would believe it. Oh my God. Copper gave me an experience survey and they're like, how can we make it better? I was like, get rid of the smell of poopy everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like they, you know that they've been cooking. They've been baking cookies in that restaurant for Dukes to cover the smell. Yeah, I know. And, and I'm it like, it's not like working guys. You've got to get Roto Rooter. You've got to fix that drain pipe. Yeah. It just smells like shit and cookies now. It's not a yeah. good smell. No. All right, we got B Kooky. Almost settled on a ride, Super Pig. How is it in the trees? Playful enough? Size large, 154, 225 pounds. Also, when are the best sales of the season? Seems sales are good right now, and they're only going to get better from here on out yeah. as they try to liquidate everything they can. Super Pig should be should be playful enough at 225 in the 54. You should be fine with that. That board, TC, TC watched me ride the 54 at Steamboat one time when I came up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the big group. And I hit that log jib, and everyone's like, How'd you? I was like, I don't know. Yeah. This is like, Burr. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fun yeah. in the trees. Like, yeah. And then when you just go and rip a groomer after, it'll be stable enough for you. Do it. Yeah. Pull my trigger. Oof. 
Next question gets a spin. All right, we'll try this one from Flying Cow. Thoughts on the Lobster Heldor Pro? That's just an evil twin with a different carbon layup in it, I believe. I don't know. We haven't written it yet this year. Oh, well. I well, no, no, no. He's talking lob because lobster and yes merge next year. But yeah. uh, the lot, the lobster. I'm pretty sure it's an evil twin with a different carbon layout. All right. It. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. It had a sweet graphic last year with the dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got Gorb. I'm here on the road, headed to JP. Hashtag Mortar Century is your friend. No, the Mortar Century is awful. <laughs> you do not bring democracy unless you're on a hilltop with the Mortar Century. Otherwise, it just kills you. <laughs> TC rigged this. All right. I did. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to close out the poll for TC here. See where we ended up with that. Um, okay. What kind of haircut should TC get? 30% said cornrows. 26% said skullet. 22 want your flowing locks. And 20% want to you to get a mohawk. Poll complete with 240. 47 votes. That's pretty but, good. Uh, yeah. So cornrows it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, BZMs. McLungo, can you make sure the 25 aeronaut gets a purple base? Hashtag 25 minutes in the hole. Sounds like a record. Hashtag spray skiers. No, it's it's red. It's red. It's a red there's base. Red, there's a red one, and I think there's a blue one, too, again. Blue ones this year, or maybe it's a wide would be the blue one. That's next. what I'm thinking. Uh, the Mercury has the purple base. Mercury, I wrote that. That, got that purple's sick. It is sick. And I'm assuming that that's going to get a purple base next year then. They're just going to reuse that material. That's what I would do with it. Oh, yeah. The same base material. Why not? But a purple base would be dope. Yeah. All right. Lose a turn. All right. We got Insulin 801. First season ruled. Already got a 24-25 Brighton Pass. Fuck yeah. Thanks for helping me ride the right shit, dudes. Bank Slalom next week. Hashtag Gordita Gang. Nice. Stay, stay low, be powerful, stay fast. my friend. Yep. Take the bank high. Drop down low. Wow. Sweet. We got you a small sticker pack, bud. Make sure you email us. <laughs> info at angry snowboarder.com with your um mailing address and tc will get that out because this week he's not going to be super busy yep all right okay we got arv chris which binding will the solomon dance hall pair the best with the battalion 20 year the blaster asim or the asterism go with the blaster asim mm -hmm. okay uh do 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 Okay. And our boy Ruff, just getting here. TC needs handle bars for them thunder cheeks or handle bands. Thunder cheeks. Yeah. Clap that ass. Okay. Let's see. Um, I think that's it. I think we're caught up. We did the lightning round. TC's got to go let the dog out. I got to go take my dog out. I got to go make some phone calls. So uh, thank you guys again for everything. Oh, uh, by the way, we got three K2 binding reviews because we forgot that we filmed them. <laughs> and so our editor just got to them. So we'll be dropping those. So you get some late K2 reviews. That's coming out. We'll be back next week for you guys with another live stream. Um, don't forget to check the cultural mystery link the week down in the description. There's also a link to the natural selection because they finally put it up on YouTube. Uh, if you're looking for something to read, uh, there's a link to Eric Blem's the, the Darkest White book about the avalanche that killed Craig Kelly. So you definitely want to check that out. And I think we'll see you guys next week. Awesome. Later, guys. Thanks.